I'm Scott Lucas. This is today's EA Worldview on Iran. The 1,000-day detention of Mir Hussein Mousavi and Mehdi Karoubi. Last Tuesday marked the 1,000th day under strict house arrest for two opposition leaders in Iran, Mir Hussein Mousavi and Mehdi Karoubi, and also Mousavi's wife, the artist, activist, and academic Zara Ranavard. Should you really care? Yes. Here's why in three points. Point one, well, what exactly happened here? In 2009, Mir Hussein Mousavi and Mehdi Karoubi both ran for president of Iran. Karoubi didn't poll that many votes, but Mousavi did. Indeed, there are many who still claim to this day that Mousavi actually won the presidential election, but that it was taken away from him by the regime who gave it to Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. Now, whether or not that election was rigged is something we can debate and continue to debate till kingdom come. The point is, is what happened afterwards to Mousavi. Mousavi was involved in the protest, not only over the presidential election, calling for legitimacy, fairness, and justice, but then protest over wider political rights, rights for students, rights for women, rights for labor, rights for activists. He called for an end to unjust imprisonment. Some criticized Mousavi and indeed Karabi, who also was active in the protest, for not necessarily being forthcoming enough, sometimes being too cautious. But the fact is, is that for many months, these two men were symbolic of a movement, a movement that said things could be better in Iran for political, social, and economic justice. 20 months after the presidential election, on February 14, 2011, the regime had had enough. Fearing that there would be a renewal of protest, even though it had put down the initial wave after the 2009 election, it suddenly went to the house of Mousavi and of Karabi and put them under armed guard. Mousavi's wife, Zara Ranavard, was also kept out of sight. So was Karabi's wife, although she was later released that summer. That was February 2011. Here we are now, more than two years later, 1,000 days later, and there is no sign that Mousavi, Karabi, and Ranavard will be released. Sure, in the presidential election this year, Hassan Rouhani promised that he would try to release all political prisoners. Without specifically saying Mousavi and Karabi's name, he implied that yes, they could probably get their freedom. But Rouhani has not been able to achieve this. While some political prisoners have been freed since June, there has been a hardline reaction against any type of concession over Mousavi and Karabi. They must repent. They must promise not to engage in political activity. They must promise, in other words, to be good and to not protest. Mousavi, Karabi, and Ranavard will not give that promise, so they must be kept away. In fact, not only must they be kept away, but there has to be continued harassment. Last month, when two of the daughters of Mousavi and Ranavard went to visit their parents, they were forcibly pushed around and insulted by the guards who felt that the girls were being inappropriate. They protested on Facebook, but who were Zara and Narjas Mousavi to try to protest against the might of the regime with all its force that could still be inflicted? Karabi is supposedly in declining health. But when his family protested that there needs to be something done, some medical attention, they were met with a relatively firm refusal from the regime. Here's the cold hard fact. President Rouhani does symbolize to an extent engagement with the West. He is different from President Ahmadinejad. But Mousavi and Karabi are something beyond that. They still represent that notion that cannot be forgotten that in 2009, millions of Iranians went on the streets saying it's not enough just to have a little bit of reform. This has to be a genuine movement for change. And there are those in the regime, including the Supreme Leader, who are still scared of that. So point two, why should it matter to us? Human rights don't stop at borders. Political justice doesn't stop at borders. Arguing that attention should be paid to Mousavi, Karabi, and Ranavard is not calling for regime change. It's not even calling, as some have, for a delay in nuclear talks. You can have nuclear engagement with Iran 
getting rid of the threat of nuclear escalation, and still, still argue that human rights is an issue which deserves attention day in and day out. Nor is it a case that paying attention to this case is trying to distract from human rights cases elsewhere. Just because you argue that most of the Caribbean Ranavard deserve justice, deserve freedom, doesn't mean that you forget, for example, about, say, Guantanamo Bay, or about illegal detentions elsewhere in the world. Point three, what next? It would be easy to walk away, to say, look, what matters for Iran is up to Iranians. But when you walk away from a case like this, you're not empowering Iranians to choose. You're dropping a curtain over them and over what they might wish. You are saying that human rights doesn't really deserve any type of gaze. Let's just leave it alone. For millions of Iranians who in the autumn of 2009 said, Obama, are you watching? America, are you watching? World, are you watching? They don't want silence. They don't want ignorance. They don't want blindness. What they want is recognition. That now, more than 1,000 days, there are three people who are being imprisoned simply because the regime is scared that they might speak out, that they might express their opinions, and that their opinions will be shared by many of their countrymen. I'm Scott Lucas, and this is today's EA Worldview on Iran.